FM, Radio Suerte, bringing you nothing but the best music. Hey, we got live on the line, legendary rapper, staple, icon, you name it, X-Rated. How you doing, X-Rated? I'm doing very well. Thank you for asking. Hey, um, you know what? I, I know you just got out. You've, you've done a long bid. In 2018, you got released. And uh, I hear you doing all these great things. And so what I really wanted to do is uh, just showcase, bring people the attention of what you've been up to. How How's things nowadays? Everything's going great, man. I've been working on music, doing speaking engagements, going to schools to talk to kids, going to churches, you know, to talk to the congregation. It's been very, very uh, enlightening and and inspirational for me to be uh, accepted in that community with, you know, the academic community would even care what I have to say. So I'm, I'm just moving forward with that positivity, what I call hug life. Yeah, hug life. That, that's, that's right, man. And, um, you know, going from, let's just say, flashback to 1991 when you were doing the albums with Brother Lynch and you released, um, you know, um, multiple multi, multiple albums psychoactive um you uh you name it just uh lots of lots of albums under your belt over 20 albums under your belt uh exorcist unforgiven speak of the devil vengeance is mine um going from that from 1991 all the way fast forward to today's music what are your thoughts on um what's transpired throughout the years wow i think that I think there's been a natural evolution. It's natural for music to evolve. We're going to get new generations with new approaches. I think that's natural. But I think also certain aspects have been allowed to penetrate the culture, you know. So there's this amalgamation now with EDM. You know, we've absorbed a significant portion of what used to be house music as its own genre now. It's almost like hip-hop. So it's, it's interesting you know, I think it cuts both ways. It's exciting on one hand, and on the other hand, it's diluted what I consider to be pure hip hop. But I'm enjoying what some people are making right now too. So you know, it cuts both ways. Right. It's, I'm, been, it's, it's been it's been interesting. It's like I'm Marty McFly. My my guys call me Marty McFly. It's like I'm Back to the Future, and it's a whole new world now. Yeah, it's almost like you took a time machine, and I think probably. Before you went in, Auto Tune was probably being used as a, a singing correction plugin that hardly got tweaked, and now people are just, you know, turning the dial up on that Auto Tune. It's just like nowadays, a lot of rappers, that, you know, they they base their rap around Auto Tune, which is kind of interesting. I bet you uh, were surprised to hear that. Yeah, and I mean, I was able to purchase music while I was down, so I watched that evolve. I listened to that evolution. Don't know how I feel about it. You know, I still haven't used it since I've been home. There's no <laughs> auto tune on my voice on my album. You, you won't hear X rated. You won't hear X rated auto tuned out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we won't be hearing that. <laughs> um, okay, how about this question? Um, before you went in, your lyrical content. Um, you know, and I'm talking way before you got busted. I'm talking about when you were first making your music with, with uh, Brother Lynch and just doing a bunch of the, just, you know, the lyrics that contained a lot of, uh, let's just say, gangster rap music to now. I'm, I'm sure your perspective has changed um, and you had a lot of time to think about, you know, wh what happened and, and just see other people's experiences while you're incarcerated. And uh, what, are your, what are your lyrics like nowadays? Are you talking about life more or? I think, I think that I've been cultivated into a more introspective, retrospective kind of MC. You know, my goal, as when I first started out, I was having fun. You know, I'm learning the craft of hip hop. It was all about cadence, delivery, and saying the most outlandish stuff. You know, I loved the uh, Ghetto Boys and the NWAs when I first came out. Easy E, Too Short. That was kind of more along the lines of what we were doing, which was almost like extreme, the extreme fantastical spectrum. But as hip hop evolved, you know, so did I. I'm, you know, Scarface went from one of the ghetto boys and writing fantastical hip hop to being one of our best writers of pure reality, spiritual music right. toward the end of his career, the latter years of his career. I watched that evolution. I watched, you know, Nas and Tupac and 
what who people consider the greats, what how Eminem evolved. And you know, one of my goals has been to be considered one of the best writers in hip hop. You know, I would I would like that argument to be uh, valid. You know, no one would ever be considered the consensus best ever. But if you can get in the argument, you've achieved something. And so I like to just provide people with ammunition to be able to say, hey, this guy's one of the best to do it. And to do that, you got to have narrative. you got to have some introspect. People got to care who you are, the ability to tell your story. So, you know, I started studying the greats. And Slick Rick told me my story. I wanted to be able to tell a good story. The guys with the best punchlines, I wanted to be able to have very good punchlines. So I kind of created myself into this bionic rapper, like the guy who could do it all. Delivery, subject, story, punchlines, metaphors. And so, you know, for me, at this point, I'm more along the lines of just, a, I think, the traditional West Coast rapper, but more along the lines of those like, you know, Kendrick and Nipsey. I'm more in that area than I am in the older era. I know you're highly respected and you got a lot of diehard fans out there. Even some of people from my generation, I'm a, I'm a little bit older. I mean, I'm not, I, I don't want to timestamp myself, but I, I can tell you this much. Um, I have friends that have purchased almost every single album that you had out there. And even while you were incarcerated, they were still listening to your music. And uh, I had mentioned to them, um, one of them, uh, I mentioned to one of my friends that you were going to be on today and, and he was Joe Diaz and he was kind of like, uh, he was like, yeah, wow. He's one of my favorite rappers. So I know you have the respect of one of the, the, the really the staples of legends in this industry. And I really respect you for um, the hard work you've done throughout the years. And also I heard, uh, I'm not going to mention, uh, you know, the, the person that um, had this broadcast, but I, I heard a, a broadcast that you recently did and I really admire um, what you're doing nowadays, as some of the some of the writing that you're doing, some of the, these public um, speaking engagements that you're going to, um, what are you doing in terms of uh, community outreach and, and going out there and bringing awareness to uh, the youth today? I've been accepting opportunities to speak at schools. Um, I've been going to churches, any youth mentoring program, uh, lighter groups, anything that I can do where there's an audience that's receptive to hearing somebody who's been through so much tell them that there's a better way to do it. And I think that's a, a sincere responsibility for me if I'm trying to be who I want to be to my family, who I perceive myself to be as a, a human being, that I have to communicate that truth to other people or I would be disrespectful and I consider to be my own blessing. Right. Um, I'm very conscious, you know, that, I was telling my daughter today, eight months and change ago, I had 31 a life. But September 13th, I had 31 a life. and never getting out of prison. September 14th, I was free. And wow. So that kind of energy, I believe, you just don't play with. So if I don't come home and, and speak what I believe to be the truth, regardless of how people would have received it, then I think I would have been subjected to some negative uh, karma. And I didn't want nothing to do with that. So... I've been taking every opportunity I could to be able to tell somebody something decent. And I'm sure you've touched, I'm sure you, I'm sure you touched hundreds of lives, if not thousands of lives. Um, and that's gotta, that's gotta mean something to, uh, the, the, the people that are receiving the message and it's gotta mean something to you too. I mean, just knowing that, you know, there's an old saying that I always say, and I've said this on air before, the purpose of life is a life of purpose. And I believe that, you know, um, if you can help somebody through your learning experiences, man, that's a blessing, man. And, and Radio Suerte is very blessed to have you on the line and, and just kind of relay some of this information that you're giving us so the public can hear it. Um, where can people find your music? Where can they, they um, I know you're working with uh, David Veneziano. Shout out to, shout out to Venezi. Um, where can people find your new music and, uh, and where can they see you at? I am on Instagram under official X rated X R A I D E D one number one. Um, I'm on YouTube official X rated. It's official X rated across the board on Facebook. They can find me easily. Uh, it's been a privilege working with David Veneziano. He's an awesome guy. Great guy. Fantastic engineer. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm working with BMG now. I got an album called California Dreaming that'll be out on July 26th. Uh, and I 
mean, I got a list of shows, a ton of shows that we're doing. The biggest one, uh, July 27th, I'll be in Bakersfield with Brother Lynch on, uh, at Fox Theater. Huge venue, you know, so we expect it to be a pretty big show and event. Uh, I'm in Portland on the 14th of June. And then I go to Santa Rosa on the 22nd. So, I mean, I'm in full-blown tour mode at this point. Man, that is awesome, and I'm 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 glad to have you on here, and uh, I'm gonna get some of that show dates from you, and I'm gonna pump it out. Radio Square that X rated. Thank you for being on the show, man. It's an honor. It's a blessing. Sancho Local Show live on the party train with Maria Luisa Luna. Uh, thank you, X rated. You're welcome, man. Thank you for having me. Have a good one, brother. You too. Man, what what a blessing to have X rated on the show. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Um, and hey, you get a chance to check out his music. He is a very intellectual speaker, and he's working with uh, a lot of great people. David Veneziano, shout out to Venezia Man, um, X Rated, Sancho Loco Show. You got it right here. Bring you nothing but the best interviews, the best music. Radio Suerte, 90.3 FM. Peace. We're about to play some more good music. And uh, here we go, right here, playing nothing but the classic music. Right here. <laughs>